the students was going to the Korean War Memorial right downtown. What? Uh, the writing that came out of that was unbelievable. If we had time, we could talk about, all of you as teachers could talk about when your students do really well with assignments, and they oftentimes come from places where they, students, develop their own experience, feel connected, mm -hmm. uh, have an experience that they can share, or see it in its local context, and the writing becomes so powerful. It's one reason, y'all, that if you have students keep a journal where they talk about things they're interested in, their writing is oftentimes a whole lot better than when they're doing formal essays. That's why. It's not because they suddenly become bad writers. It's because they feel confident, they're curious, they're uh, engaged. That is perfectly possible to do in an academic writing. Yeah. Uh, do you find students' absorption with the internet, cell phones, uh, and digital social networking uh, detrimental to their attention to the concrete? Are you able to actually use those to refocus them on their local content? You, that is a, a wonderful question, and I think we're only now beginning to do research that would suggest anything about the effect of uh, even email. I think we haven't done enough research to show, you know, how that's affecting the way students engage. I am always worried about the move away from face-to-face -to -face engagement towards uh, uh, electronic communication. I'm worried about it because civic discourse, public engagement, responsibility for one another, these are things that our democracy is about. This is what we should be teaching. And the more that we are distant from it um, in this kind of friending way, where we don't even have to know who's friended us. Um, the more we're, we pull away from that, the more I worry that the responsibilities and the engagement, the assimilation, the accommodation that needs to happen um, gets lost. I do believe there are really great things you can do to use that toward the end of um, other kinds of engagements. Discussion boards, terrific. Uh, I mean, even text messaging. And I'll tell you one little story. This is long, long ago. When I was teaching high school, and my students loved to pass notes. <laughs> they didn't text message then, of course. But they passed notes. And so I realized they were just kind of, especially the 10th grade, I don't know. The 10th grade, they were into it. So I finally just decided I was going to make it part of their instruction. We got together in little groups, and they were talking about Polly Hawthorne. My students believe that's the only book. Uh, Bartlett's the only book I've ever read. Um, I was using it as an example. So maybe they were talking about that. And I said, OK, now, I want you to write a couple of insights that you really have about the evil of chilling work. Just make a little note and pass it without them seeing it to the next group. Hmm. You know, they loved it, but it also did something else. It took away the evil of it, so then it wasn't very fun. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, I think the electronic stuff, we need to harness it. We need to see it as what it is, a tool. It is not a panacea. The daggone computer is not a panacea. This kind of electronic communication is not. It's a tool. It's a great one. Use it that way. But the aim is not so we can get better at the computer. That's not the aim. Yeah. Um, one of the things um, that I think texting, IMing, message boarding, uh, all that kind of computer discourse is it can bring in a really savvy way to talk about genre and the constraints of genre, how uh, communication changes through a text message, and also uh, the cost of grammar. If you write grammatically correct sentences about a text message, that's inappropriate and that it's weird. <laughs> and so we can then attach an audience sense of, uh, to grammar. And, and if you talk about electronic communication, I think that would be a really academically sexy way of talking about job for our students that they can relate to. And then make the easy connection to this literacy. They're literate in the genre of I am. Right, yes. And also audience. See, it all connects. Audience. It all connects, you know. My audience determines that I'm going to write this this way. Um, and of course, I watch my students, you know, they can do those text messages really fast. My daughter sometimes sends me a text message, and so I like try to do it back. I know how to do it, but it's like I take. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, I don't know how to do, like, I don't know how to correct it. So it's like, like I don't know how to, so it's like I've got like J, J, J. Terrible. I'm very illiterate. Yeah. yeah. Um, on the, going back to that and trying to harness it, first, it harnesses us. Um, and I've had some conversations about this. When you start getting on the internet, blogging, or how you can get caught up in something. You're caught up, you get caught up in virtual reality, which is, is, is dangerous. And if, if you look at the movies that we see now, a lot of them are about the evils of virtual reality and what is really real here and what's the fake person, what's the clone, what's this, what's that. And I think it could lead.